underneath your preview screen, click on this little icon, timeline view options, and then enable display stacked timelines. This new little bar will appear right here. And this is something I think everyone should enable. Even you, George. Let me know if your name's George and I've just completely freaked you out. <laughs> Even if you don't really use stacked timelines because inside that little button hides some really useful little shortcuts. <sighs> now, before I show you, if you don't know exactly what stacked timelines are, stacked timelines just means that you can have this timeline open here. We can click our little drop down and we can switch to any of the other timelines that we have open within our project. And if you want to have another timeline open, we click on our plus, then we select a different timeline and then we can really quickly jump between the two timelines or three or four or five or however many timelines you want open. It is also really useful if you do a lot of compound clips because you see this compound clip here on this timeline. If I right click and open in timeline, it will open that compound clip up as its own little stacked timeline option. So then if I was to come in here and mess with this, do some trims, maybe put the binoculars effect on that one, whatever, jump back to the main timeline, I can see that effect. So we can jump into the timeline and see what's going on and then jump directly into the compound clip, have a little mess with it, jump back to the main timeline and there we go. So again, that's another reason to have these open. But even if, even if you don't do any of those things, why do I recommend that you still enable this display stacked timelines? Well, it's because it has some handy little shortcuts in there. If you right click on this option, you can close the timeline, close other timelines, rename the timeline, really quickly access the timeline settings. So if we give that a click, ta-da, here we are. We can change the resolution, change the color, change the output, the scaling, all of this useful stuff. We can really quickly load the timeline to the source viewer. So then we're in our source viewer mode. We can find the timeline in the media pool. So if you haven't been as organized as maybe you'd like to be and you need to find that timeline can be a little bit annoying. Instead, you right click. Obviously, you may just want to do the timeline settings, but if you need it, you can also find the timeline in the media pool. There it is. And last but not least, probably I think the most useful one, duplicate timeline. So let's say you've done a big edit here, kind of happy with it, but you want to tweak it. Maybe you want to try something else, but you may want to jump back to this version if you don't like whatever you've done. So rather than just messing with it and then ended up having to do undo, if we right click, duplicate the timeline, that will make this copy of that timeline automatically open it up. Then we can come along, make any changes, tweak things, do what we want to do and go, hmm, Am I happy with this version? No, I think I'll get rid of that and go back to the previous one. And you can do that anyway, but you have to find the timeline within the media pool. You could assign a keyboard shortcut or whatever, but just having that little box open, which you can right click and select all those options at any time is super useful. So there you go. Timeline settings, display stacks, timelines. I think it's handy. So I figured I'd, 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 I'd tell you about it. Thanks for watching. See you next time.